tốt cả Giai dụng ở học ba Finish up our punch card. I hope you have had fun learning with us and going on this journey. So why are we here and what is a punch card? <laughs> Welcome, this is our pet class. So what we have worked through over the past year is this punch card. And it is just extended learning classes that we have gone through, uh, talking about wellness, vitality, and we're on the pet class, the very last one. So once you finish your pet, your, your punch card, just reach out and we'll get you a diffuser. So what are some other things? In the comments, <clears throat> I'm very hard to hear. Darn it, let's see. Let's try this. Um, in the comments, just Put an emoji, either a pet emoji or a say hi, how you doing? And the reason being is for everybody that joined live today, tonight, you're going to get a chance to win a set of stickers for your animals. One is geared towards dogs and one is geared towards cats. And then what I'm going to do is we've taught the same class. This will be the third time. And I will pick a winner from every, oh, pick a winner, or pick somebody that has been live for all three classes, and you will win the Spoil Your Pet book, which is great, essential oil reference for you. Um, just walking you through recipes, tips and tricks on how to use on your animal. And then the other thing that I have uploaded to the team page already is these tear cards, tear sheets, uh, recipes, and then even just some nice precautionary things for you uh, in regards to how to use essential oil for your pets. I scanned them in and so they are there for your reference and all that good stuff. And then one last thing for anybody that gets started and has already gotten started with oils, I mean the the first time that you place your first 100 PV LRP order, you will get this Essential Life book from us. It is a great reference. It's awesome. It's just, it's great. So let's dive right in. Make sure I did everything. Yeah. So here's my question for you. Are essential oils safe to use with your pets? Okay. I want to show you who I have here. I have, so I don't have pets, I have children. That's enough for me to deal with at the moment, but I brought some friends along so we could talk. So pets in general come in all different sizes, okay? We've got little guys and big guys, <laughs> okay? So keep that in mind when you are going to be using your oils. Uh, so if you have a smaller pet, a little bit less, oils. If you have a larger pet, you can uh, obviously use a few more oils uh, drop-wise if you need to. So let's go back to the question I asked. Are essential oils safe to use around your pets? And the answer is yes. Um, doTERRA, at least anyway, because they are potent, they are pure, they are effective, and they are strong. Um, just use common sense. Okay, and we're gonna give you some guidelines so that you feel a little bit more secure in using your oils in and around your animals. Um, a couple of tips and tricks for you are going to be, when you diffuse your oils, don't have your pet locked inside the room. Okay, just allow your pet to be able to roam freely if they choose, okay? Sometimes you diffuse something and you don't like the way that it smells. Your pets are probably gonna be the same way and that's okay, just honor and respect that, okay? Uh, let them smell the oil first. So put the oil on your hand, present it to your animal, 
let them sniff it, smell it. They might lick it, that's okay. Uh, it allows them to kind of be in control and say, yeah, you know, this oil really is working with me today or no, nah, I don't want that one, I'm good. And then just respect your pet's reaction. They don't like it, don't force it upon them. <laughs> it's kind of the same way with kids. If they don't like an oil, I'm not gonna douse them unless they're freaking out, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, one thing that you got to think about is animals don't do well with synthetics. So that's why it's really important to use doTERRA's pure potent therapeutic grade oils. So think about it. If you are using a, a synthetic, sometimes a hard word for me, a synthetic cleaner, you're rubbing your countertops down, you're cleaning your floors with that toxic synthetic cleaner. And what are your animals doing? Your cats are walking across your counter. Your dogs are rolling around on your floors that you just mopped, right? And now all of that synthetic uh, cleaning supplies are getting into their system and getting on them. So they don't do well with it. Um, something to think about is you can really just keep it nice and simple with your animals. So, for example, we can just use some lavender and frankincense and this will solve a ton of issues and a ton of concerns that you might have with your pets okay uh wounds you can use a little lavender some frankincense which you can get free this month which is awesome um this can help with any sort of itchiness that might be going on with your pets uh, it has a, a, a number of promises and, and, and results okay so let's talk a little bit about dilution for small animals, you need to be conservative, like I mentioned before, and be a little on the conservative side, a little bit of less is more in this case, okay? So you're gonna want to, want to use a one to 3% ratio. And really that's about three to six drops in a 10 milliliter roller, which I will show you really quick what a 10 milliliter roller is. For those of you that may or may not know, this is a 10 ml roller. Okay, so you're gonna to wanna to do maybe three to six drops and that's about a one to 3% ratio. Um, fill the rest up with the fractionated coconut oil. Um, even if you wanted to make a salve, you could just use some hard coconut oil and, and add a few drops of lavender and frankincense and then put that on the dog or the animal that might have some itchiness or some raw, um, some raw things. So um, that is really safe. That's a great safe ratio to start with for smaller animals. And then you can start there. And if you need to add more, you can. Sometimes it's a little hard to put roller bottles on your animals, use the roller bottles on your animals. So just putting some coconut oil and then putting a few drops of oil in your hand and then using that and, and putting it on your animal is a great way. So something to think about too is for dogs, more so dogs right now, right? So you can uh, put it on their ears. Okay, you're gonna to wanna to put them on their, their paws, open up their, their paws and put it in between the paws of their, or in between, in between, whatever those are called. Something to keep in mind though, if you notice this bunny, we'll pretend it's a dog, but if you notice this, what do the ears do? They're flopping around and we just slathered oil all over this bunny's ears and now what's that bunny gonna do? Right? And what do our dogs usually do? They do that. So just keep in mind of animals that have the longer ears and if you're putting oils on there, they may actually end up getting the oil inside their eye and that's gonna irritate them. So just use some caution a little bit on, you know, in that end of things when you're putting the oils on your animal. Just like humans, we don't like oils in our eyeballs unless you do. And hey, <laughs> that's, all, that's all on you. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the oh, Melaleuca, okay, Melaleuca. Anyone know what I'm gonna talk about with Melaleuca? And cats, okay. So here is the concern with Melaleuca, is Melaleuca with cats, their body just does not metabolize the oil melaleuca as fast as, 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 it does, as it would if you used it on yourself or even on a dog, okay? So 
that's the real issue with it is their body doesn't metabolize it as fast. So they could actually kind of OD in, in a sense on melaleuca. So it's really just a safe rule to say don't use melaleuca around your cats. There are tons of other options that you can use and just to be a little bit on the safe side with that. So that's where that is. Um, it just takes their body a little bit longer to process. Um, yeah, I'm just use something else, like I said. All right, so some other options, okay? What are some other options? You could use geranium instead of melaleuca, and you can use arborvitae. Arborvitae is an awesome oil to help with any sort of fungus or irritation and stuff like that. You know, similar to how you would use melaleuca, you can use arborvitae in that, in that sense, which is great. So some other options for fleas and ticks. So thankfully right now we're in, not in that season, but it can still happen, right? If you know or heard about TerraShield, TerraShield is awesome. TerraShield is a proprietary blend, all formulated and mixed up by doTERRA, and it's great to use on your animals, and we use it on ourselves as humans to keep the mosquitoes and the bugs away. This is a great option to use and to incorporate for your animals. You can put a little bit on their collar. You can do a treatment on them. Um, another way to do it, to give you a better idea too, is you, you put the oils on your animal's ears. You can rub it down their back. Okay, massage it that way. You can even go against the grain of the animal if you wanted to, to kind of really get it in there. Even the, the bottoms and the belly, okay? Like my elephant. <laughs> and then even uh, into the feet. And really you can just kind of, what animal doesn't like to be pet, petted or, or taken care of? And so you can really incorporate oils with that and just, you know, help your animal have a great experience. Uh, let's see. So yeah, so you just want your animal to have a good, fun experience with it. Okay, some other oils that you can use for anxious feelings. So our animals have feelings also, and so you can use some oils to help soothe them, help calm them down. So what would some oils be that you use for yourself? Think about it that way. You can also use them for your animals. Some great ones are lavender. Again, that's a great calming, a great soothing one. Geranium is one of the ones that we're just going to keep hitting home with. And so geranium is a great oil to use on your animals. It's gentle and it's, it's just effective for the calming properties. Even frankincense is a great one too, just to help with the jitters that you might have going on. And again, let the animal smell it first and then put it at the bottoms of the, on the pads of the feet uh, in between. Can give your animal a little foot massage too that way. Uh, tips of the ears, go against the hair, with the hair, all that good stuff. So seasonal threats. Our animals suffer, suffer from seasonal threats. So normally with a dog, you could go ahead and use lemon, lavender, and peppermint. But my little disclaimer for you is that cats actually don't do very well with citrus oils. So what is a great substitute for lemon? Lemongrass, believe it or not. Uh, lemongrass doesn't have that citrus to it, even though it sort of smells citrusy. And it does have a lot of the great uh, same properties as, as that, and it, that can really help. Um, again, where would you put them? Do you want to put it down the belly? I can actually show you on my animal here, right? Down the belly. You want to put it at, in the ears around, not in the ears, sorry, on the outside of the ears, down the back. Um, the paws of the feet, you know, all that good stuff. So then, um, yeah, so you can substitute the lemongrass for the lemon. You can use frankincense. There are a ton of great options. So some wounds. Your animal has an open wound or a sore or anything like that. Myrrh is actually a great oil to use and soothe and heal, heal things up. Helichrysum is another one. It's awesome for anything owie, boo boo, blood related. It's good. Uh, frankincense, we talked about a little bit. And geranium, I said we we're going to keep going back to geranium. Again, this is going to be a must have if you have animals that you want to take care of, even for yourself. Um, and it just helps cope the, the open wound, it helps heal the open wound. And you may find that your animal looks nice. 
such a dramatic bad thing is okay. Um, most of these oils that we talked about are injectable. And you can just use a coconut oil, a hard coconut oil, make a gel, and you know, just rub it all on the open wound, not your open wound, but your animal's open wound. Um, horses, uh, if you have horses or even larger animals like that, Kutaiba is another great one that you can use to help just soothe, calm, um, you know, give, give any sort of anxious type feelings that you might have. It's really great that way. Um, just then, your, your animal is suffering from some indigestion or something's going on with the belly. Go right ahead and use a little bit diluted digest on, digest on it. It would be awesome. Even breathe can help open up the airways, help the breathing and the respiratory and all that fun stuff. So the great thing that doTERRA is going to be doing in 2019 is creating a pet advisory board, which is awesome for someone like myself who doesn't have animals and just was like, Ooh, what do I do? I don't know. Uh, so it's a great option. Once that is released, we will get you in the know and you can know all about it and get involved with that. Um, there is a veterinarian that I love and trust and follow on Facebook. She's the one that actually created this tarot card. She's phenomenal. Um, she's really, really awesome. And if you have a pet or you want to be a little bit more comfortable with using your essential oils with your animals, I highly suggest that you follow her. Her name is right there. And it's Janet Rourke. And she's a veterinarian and she's really awesome. Um, does anybody have any questions? Let me hop over to Facebook and see if we have any questions. Oh, lavender. Your horse loves lavender. That's awesome. Yes, Copaiba also. It's a good one to use. Let's see what other comments do we have. Yay. Any questions? Any questions? Not. That concludes our pet class. I really appreciate you joining us. If you have any questions, reach out and 